Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so excited. Katie and I have been chatting back and forth um, through Instagram. Because like, isn't that how everybody, well, actually, we didn't talk that much yesterday because Instagram went down, right? But we've been chat <laughs> chatting back and forth and just really getting excited about um, today's Facebook Live. And so I'm super glad that you're here. One thing I always like to do um, is just double check that it's streaming in our groups. It should be streaming in the Primary Collaborative, and it should also be streaming in, um, I see us in... I don't know which group it's yeah. in. Yes. Okay. I right. do. You're there. I'm there. there. So those of you who don't know me, I'm Dee Dee Wills. Um, I blog over on a blog, Mrs. Wills Kindergarten. And we have Katie Gardner, who is the mastermind behind Secret Stories. Um, if you have been in education for any small period of time, you probably have heard of Secret Stories. You probably are using Secret Stories. So if you could, in the comments, would you just go ahead and type in, let us know where you are in the world. Um, and then let us know if you are currently using Secret Stories. Um, kind of what is your, maybe we should have like an expert level. What do you think, Katie? So like a five, if you've been using secret stories for more than a year. Okay. Yep. A, uh, okay. Okay. And then like a one, if you've, if you've never heard of it or never seen them before and go ahead and give us a grade for you. And I would love to know kind of what is your experience with them? I know that I think I actually, I don't think I told you this, but I think I saw you, um, before my TPT days, um, I went to uh, like an Illinois reading conference and I think I yes. was seeing you and it was like, I, maybe I did tell you this already, but so, um, Danielle, she's been, she's a two, so she's kind of dabbling with them. So hopefully we'll be able to get you kind of up to a four or five, um, with your knowledge base on here. But anyhow, I remember, um, kind of sitting in on one of your conferences. This was before, I think I was an instructional coach at the time. So, um, yeah, I see um, somebody in Indiana is a two. Sometimes it tells us, can you see the comments on the side, Katie? Yes. I love that first year using, and I feel like I'm an expert. Yay. Woo! I love That's it. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, some people are now it'll just say for us, it'll say Facebook user, which feels so bad, but you guys have to give us a, you have to give us approval or the Facebook group approval to put your name out there when it goes to a group. So if you feel like doing that, we have somebody from New York who is a five. Excellent. Um, <laughs> wonderful. Yay. Molly's here from Ohio. She just started using it in kindergarten and I don't know how I ever lived without them. That is so awesome to hear. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, Got it. I'm just going to double check that I'm not missing something. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. Katie, are you ready to start? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that we wanted to um, talk about is, you know, how do we use secret stories with um, you know, the science of reading and how do we use it with the codable text? Or maybe you have to use, maybe you're using something, a program at school that you're required to use, but you know, it's not quite getting it for you. So you'd like to be able to kind of kick it up a notch. So, um, would love to have you kind of walk us through Katie, if you could, how these secret stories are going to help. Sure. Um, pretty much just wherever there is text they're going to be secrets. So whatever you are using, and definitely today we're all using and doing and trying and learning new things on a rapid basis. Yeah. But the beauty of text is that the code doesn't change. So whether you're five and you're looking at a word like V, or whether you're in medical school and you're looking at the word thrombosis, the TH still says So the beauty of that is that once you own the building blocks of the code, the world's your oyster and, and the text level is going to keep spiraling upward, but the code won't ever change. So the goal really, I feel should be to, 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 to acquire the code, like a merry-go-round that just keeps coming back, not right. in little deliveries across kindergarten, first grade, second grade, where it's parceled out in bits and pieces, because at the end of the day, the code is a puzzle and you can't do anything with a puzzle if you don't have all of it. It's no right. fun to play with a third right. of the puzzle. You can't even do anything right. with a third of the puzzle. 
And right. you're not motivated to want to take it out and play with a third of the puzzle. So I, if, if, if you just at the most common denominator level, just think text is everywhere. Secrets are, are just phonics patterns. Phonics patterns are the code and the code is needed to crack the text. So it does give us some common ground, which is nice in today's time where it feels like we're everywhere, everywhere. on every side of everything. Yeah. And, and so it's nice to know we can kind of meet in that one place, no matter our grade, no matter our kids, no matter our level, our city, our country, text is everywhere. Secrets or phonics patterns are the code that the text contains. And it really doesn't matter what the level of the text is. The code never changes. It's the same all the time. You just want to right. own it. Right, right. And, you know, I know that, you know, there's always that pendulum swing, right? We have the pendulum swing towards whole language and then here and then there mm -hmm. and back and forth. And now the pendulum swing is, is solidly in a science of reading um, arena, which to me um, feels like, it's bringing us back to paying attention to the phonics pattern, AKA what you're talking about, the secret. So I feel like they go together beautifully. Um, the implementation might be some of the things that people have questions. So hopefully we can um, unpack that. We've been kind of talking back and forth. So we have a couple of ideas of how we'll kind of unpack that. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, not every district is, um, has their teachers trained in science of reading. Not every district has even um, a, a way that we differentiate instruction for students who might need more instruction. So, you know, every teacher that's out there, sometimes they're on their own, but they're not because, you know, there's there's people in this group and in, in your group and both groups that are experiencing the same type of um, overload, um, not enough information and too much information at the same time. Doesn't that feel like what it is? Yes. Yeah, it really does. Not enough really and too does. much. So what do I do with all of this stuff? So we thought maybe we could just kind of walk through um, a few things and I'm going to be the slide master, but I'll probably be pretty quiet as Katie goes through these first couple of slides. Okay. Um, I do think Thank I have you. to have my face here on the screen. I'm gonna see if we can get that any bigger. Nope, that just made me bigger. That's not good. So we'll just go back to this. Um, I don't. You know could take me know. off. The, well, the, mm -hmm. no, because the they won't be able to hear you. Eh, okay. Oh. Okay. Is anybody you know getting car sick yet? Because I'm like moving you around. <laughs> Let's go ahead. I'll just be quiet, and you let me know if you want me to move on to the next slide. And can they do my little trick where they just use their fingers to make? Because I know with mine, I can just make my screen bigger. I can't see the chat when I do it, but I can just use my mouse pad to yeah. um, stretch it. Can that happen for them? Um, they should can be able to. It's just, a, it's just like any other video that they'd be watching. So they should be able to stretch that in, I think. Yeah, if you guys can do that just so you can see, because things are going to get a little bit smaller. Of course, I can show you some visuals to help. But the the at the end of the day, kind of piggybacking on what I said, and the reason that I was really attracted to wanting um, to pull together with Dee is I... Dee was talking about she had come across me. I have seen a lot of what they've created and really been um, just so impressed with how many, um, how much bang for the buck you get out of using different, different tools or different applications, whether it's a, it's a reading series, whether it's um, like a practice pack, that's even if it's something that's not even supposed to be specific to reading, there's so many skills embedded within it. And that's always how I like to work, which is you get the most bang for the buck. So what you're doing in that five or 10 minutes, you're getting maximum instructional value. The secrets don't have applicational pieces because the secrets are just tools. They're not a program. They're just a way to make sense of what letters do when they don't do what they should. So the other half of that equation is, so when then what can I apply it to that's going to be a good use of my time? And obviously districts give us a lot of stuff that we have to use. We've got, you know, our reading series. You might have a phonics program. You know, we've got all the things that we need to be using. We've got our scope and sequence that we're supposed to be following. I kind of see that as your playground. That's where you're supposed to be. And that's the place you get to go on any given day. And you better be at the right place at the right time because that's where you're supposed to be. The secrets are just like the muscles to maximize your time on the playground. But if you have flexibility with your playground, if you can pull in things that you know are going to be high value um, uh, targets for your kids to really gain a lot of strategies in the shortest, most concentrated time, then 
I like to look for resources that I feel do that. So that's really where I kind of saw this nexus. Um, and you'll see as we kind of just show some different things where this ease of, of connection is, because that's the other thing is if something's not really well crafted and by something, I mean, something that you can apply your skills to, uh, something that you can play on like a playground. If it's not a well-crafted playground, you can, you can spin your wheels and not really get very far. You don't get a lot out of the time you might spend doing it. So I really like to, to make sure that if I have any control over what I'm doing or what my kids are doing, that we're playing on a playground that's really rich and has a lot of learning opportunities that we can uncover and, and run with. So you're going to see as we look through this that, that it makes it a very easy fit for having secrets, things to make sense of the sounds letters make, and then being able to apply them and not just apply them, but easily reinforce because things kind of keep coming back while they're in a familiar construct because you're seeing things that are also content-based as part of these readers that we're looking at. But really whether it's a reader or if it's an, a, a pack that's gonna give you practice doing something else or content knowledge, I just really like the way that everything's so laid out and so well organized. So those are the kind of things I look for as a good fit with secret stories. And if you use secret stories and you're looking for these pieces, that's kind of why we're doing this, to just show you how these connections can, can be so fluid. So on that note, I wanna just mention what you see underneath my picture. And that is uh, the words, why wait? That's really my, I guess, I, I'm gonna have that on my tombstone, I think, because I just don't understand why we wait. Um, again, the code's a puzzle. You can't play with pieces of a puzzle and do diddly squat with it. You need all of it and or at least as much as you can have as soon as you can get it. And you can't wait three years to get an owl sound or an oi sound. You, you can't wait. If your name's Howard, you really can't wait. So kids need what they need to do what they want as readers and as writers. And they can have it if we look at the brain science. And to me, one of the things I really love about the science of reading in terms of the trajectory it set us on is going and looking at how we learn to read, although I'd like to take it one step further and look at how we learn to learn. And when we look at early brain development, which is a cornerstone of science of reading, what we know that's not tapped into, and yet should be, is that the brain develops back to front and the earlier developing centers that are our in as teachers are the feeling networks, the social and emotional feeling-based emotional centers. That's an open door. It's a common denominator, it's accessible, and it's functioning at a high level. Unlike this executive processing center, which is the later to develop area, it's, it's in the front. A lot of our kids at the early grades, they haven't even built the door to knock on yet. So we can waste a lot of time um, as a slave to developmental readiness when we could just wander right through the back. So that is what the secrets are gonna kind of focus on, at least as we're looking at this nexus between some of these pieces that um, I see just as such a good fit with the secret, secret stories application. So I'm just gonna tell you like two examples of what I mean here, T and H. Before kids know what a T is or an H is, you can so easily arm them with really an even more um, high leverage tool than a T or an H by themselves, and that's TH. Because T and H, when they come together, which they are going to in every book, on every page, and practically on every line, when they get together, all they do is what kids totally know how to do themselves. They stick out their tongues, they're bratty, and they go, and that's the sound they make. And just like kids can tattle on each other and say Johnny and Sim Timmy can't sit together because they always stick out their tongues, they're gonna use the same neural pathways to remember that these guys can't sit together. And yet they do, everywhere. What do they say when they sit together? How do they know? Because it's something they already know and already understand because they already do it. The only thing they don't know and that they don't understand are what these letters are or what those letters say. And that's what the poster does. The poster's just the external brain connection that holds what they don't already know. What they do already know is what lets them make sense of it. So with Science of Reading, and I know Didi did, um, an interview with, uh, um, from yeah, the two authors. Uh -huh. and I, the, the, the main focus really, I mean, I think what we're all going for is to connect those sound symbol speech to print connections in the brain. So they're automatic, fluid and instant. That's what we want. I mean, that's the right. goal. So when kids see this, they go, Ugh. or when you go, Ugh, they immediately know the culprits. They know it. that one too. That's simple. Yeah. They might not know it's a digraph yet in kindergarten. 
Right. And they don't need to necessarily call it a digraph in kindergarten. What they do need to do is when they're reading, have a sound instantly come off their, their tongue, which is, or when they're writing and they want to write the, this, they, or, right. or that. Right. Look up there. So oh, yeah, we is. did, we spent some time with um, the authors um, of Shifting the Balance. Um, and then that's the book uh, bringing in the science of reading into a bound solution classroom. And the last two chapters were really talking about what types of cues we give students when they have the point of difficulty and what's wrong with the MSV kind of system for cueing, which is where guided reading really came in. Um, and so I loved, I loved this book because it gave us the things to keep and the things to kind of rethink. Um, and so it was just perfect, but I'm going to keep going with the slides because you've got a lot of great things here. So can you talk about this a little bit? Yeah, this is just kind of going to be a visual for what we're going to be looking at when we kind of marry the text in these readers that we're going to look at with the building blocks that kids need to um, identify those sounds of the letters on the page. Right. So it's just a, a, a way to see, like if you're looking at the word saw, it's not sa-awa, it's sa So it might be that you have to toss out like a secret about a -U -A -W. That's a second grade secret. But you might need to toss it out on the very first day of kindergarten, lest you look like a liar, because that word behind you on the calendar is not August, it's August. And the reason that's important is you just sang your alphabet song, where you said A says an A. So you can't walk over here five minutes later and say, guys, let's read this word, August. Now, the handy part is then when you're doing a reader activity, like the ones we're going to look at, you're going to see and get value out of use from this key, because this key will unlock the word saw or paw or awful um, or awesome. There's so, or spaghetti sauce on the lunch menu. So, so having that orthographic that, mapping is key. Yeah, so one of the things that um, with the, um, not your mother's sight words, which is the product that I am put together with Deanna, um, we talk a lot about orthographic mapping um, and you know, for the word saw or for, or any of those words that they haven't received the phonics for yet, we will identify the sounds that are making the sounds that they're supposed to most of the time, you know, the F or in this case S. And then the ones that are not necessarily following the phonics rule that we've been taught yet, we just put a heart over the top. And so this would be a shift for that. This would be, mm -hmm. um, this would be instead of putting a heart, we would put the story over the top. And yes, they have to remember that it's not going a ah, W, well, right? They have to remember that, but they also have a visual to prompt them on what it does say. So it's not just, I got to remember this. It's, right, oh, right. I know what, the, I know what yes. these two sounds together do, right? Yes. And you know what's funny about what you just said is because of the back, door trajectory of the the way we're hitting this in the brain yeah they will probably know this before they know the a and the w respectively because at least like what will we do the better alphabet so it's muscle memory for individual letter sounds and it's all muscle memory no cognitive connection until they're ready to use them so that takes two weeks to a month and while that's happening you're tossing out secrets so since it's always august typically when school starts, you probably will toss this out before kids know a letter from a number from a squirrel, which is interesting because it's a backward situation. The hard thing right. is easy. The easy thing takes longer. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. And you're using like your sight word unit. And that's another thing. Like there's so much to play with in there. And right. the heart words are, or heart parts are the parts you haven't taught. But really the genesis of science of reading is always actively decode over memorize whenever humanly possible if it's a skill you can't toss it out at this rapid fire pace but these aren't skills they're just stories and they're stories kids already know based on behaviors they already understand so there right. is no limitation so yes you don't have to put a heart over everything you haven't gotten to yet because at the at the baseline it's just a story oh, they won't gonna, use yeah. it until they're cognitively ready to apply it so right. in that regard right. there's nothing overwhelming because it's just a story like snow white or cinderella it's right. just a story they already well, know well, we would want to make sure though we would want to make sure that um the t students aren't always seeing the word saw and thinking just ah uh, because we want them we um i guess okay i'm just thinking out loud so shut me down. But I'm thinking we don't want, we don't want students to, th um, 
think saw and only um only recognize that aw in the context of using the word saw because the whole point is they're going to see oh, yeah. awe in all other types of words so we, we want to make sure that we um if we're giving them a story we show them other words where that story pops up am i making sense you are and what okay. what you're doing and we're going to talk about that actually on the in those decodables is right. you're tossing it out because you're not making sense it's because you can't say this word's August. That's your open door to explain. Oh, there's a secret. There's a secret in this word. It's a grown-up reading secret. That's why you can't read it. It's not at us. So you're you're using that key for that word. But now that you've got that key, you're going to use that sucker all day. Right. You're going to use it every chance you get because you're going to be modeling what the key does to the door. What the key does to the door. So it won't be a word. It will be. Any word you have, Austin, in your name, his name right. tag is going right. to need to be figured out or his name's at Austin. So, yes, that's key because you have to model what it is. That cause and effect is a natural thing. Not just in that one location at no. that time. Right. No. Yeah. Um, that's the power up of it. Yeah. Is that it's theirs now. You toss it out. It's it's accessible. And now you're going to use the heck out of that thing to show them the power they have now over text. And the more they have the more power they gain. And that's where things start popping off the walls everywhere. And you don't have to wait, but it's a buffet. It's not a waitress where you're sticking right. it in front of them. It's I love this comment out. from our, our Facebook user. Sorry, Fred. I know I probably know exactly who you are, um, but it just says Facebook user. But my students um, find stories on text during our lessons. I put a finger on their lip. And then if I call them, they come and find it, it. and great. show us. So that's a great that's way. Great. Right. Very that cool. is great. I love that that's their sign. That is awesome. Um, I, we have a awesome. we have a new person on here. She says she's just feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Friend, we all feel overwhelmed when we get something new. So you are not alone. Um, hopefully after today, we're going to give you some um, different ways on how you can you know use use this resource. So um, moving onward, we have a few things here. So this is a leveled text that. Deanna and I wrote years ago. Um, it was under the time when I was under the umbrella of guided reading is life, right? Um, and in the last two or three years, I've come to realize that I was mistaken um, and that guided reading isn't life. Um, and that, you know, that may not have been the best practices for our at-risk readers, blah, blah, blah. I, you all know my story. Um, those people who are in Katie's group already kind of know where, where we're going with this, that, you know, whole language, that kind of approach is, is not working. So we need to come up with a better way. So, but we thought we would look at, because Katie um, has been talking about how the words show up everywhere and we have um, opportunities to talk about stories, regardless of whether it's an instructional text or it's something they see on a sign, or it's something they see in a book that you're reading to them. So um, we went ahead and took a leveled text. Some of you may be working at a district that requires you to continue to use guided reading, right? And if that's possible, if that's something that you are if you're experiencing, you may be looking for some secrets, see what I did there, to help your students be more successful with the text. So um, that's the introduction, go Katie. Okay. And and for folks who are already using the secrets, you would see this as totally decodable text because the secrets that you would have tossed out, even just in the first few weeks of kindergarten, are all the ones they need to get through what we're actually looking at. Now, that's not to say that you take kids, and Dee and I were talking about this, that are just starting this path of becoming a reader, and you throw text at them that has, you know, 18 secrets on in the little reader, because that would be overwhelmed. But if you start out with the superhero vowels and their short and lazy sounds, which you have to if you're doing the better alphabet song, because they're in there, and they know sneaky Y, which you have to because you're doing the better alphabet song, those are on the table right from the get-go. So then you've got these other most needed ones that come up, the TH, the SH, the ER. As these things are kind of stockpiling, you'll see that these are this is a beautifully decodable book, and it's going to give a parallel experience to what your math directions are going to give, to what your social studies text or the big book that you're looking at is going to be, or their name tags, or the lunch menu. Text is everywhere outside of that half hour block. So decodable text is key. And, and we're kind of reversing this because toward the end, we're going to look at the decodables specifically. 
that Didi's right. created. But I see these as well as pulling into play so many different layers of learning. As long as kids are actively decoding and not memorizing, because that's and, really the that's really the only issue is just not memorizing but actively decoding. That's that's the litmus test there. Right. So, so here's a um, here's a page from that book. Um, so can you walk us through a little bit of what you're thinking on here or two pages? Yeah, I have to make my bigger so I can see it there. I know, huh? Um, you can, you can see, like, I didn't put things, the, those little stickers are just like little, um, little embedded ones that you can pull and kind of put, I wouldn't overuse those because I like kids to see text in its natural habitat, which is right. just with the letters. But it does, for our purposes, go ahead and give you kind of a, a, a connector piece to see how it works. But in the words, um, like if you're looking at the at these at these passages, those are the only secrets that are needed if kids know those individual letters and sounds. No, if, so if kids know individual letters and sounds, those are the secrets that they would need to be able to make sense of the rest of the text. Now, that's not counting a heart word like your, which obviously is a heart word. I would just put the heart over the heart part, which would be the OU. Um, or the word two, again, I would put it just over the part that's going wrong because the T is still doing what it should. But when you look at the rest of it, sense, how do kids know which way the vowel is going to go? Well, because there's a mommy E, but she's too far away. So she can yell and scream all she wants. She can't get a hold of that vowel. That's why it's a short and lazy E. Um, of is actually decodable with something called thinking vowels, but that's a whole other thing. Um, if you go into the group, type it in the search bar, you'll see how to decode of and want and was and done and some and love and all that. Uh, small A-L. Oh, smell. Sorry, smell. Yeah. Same thing, short and lazy E. No mommy E or babysitter vowel. Same thing with helps. Um, I do see small there. Or is that smell? That's a smell again at the end. Your sense of oh, smell, smell helps you smell. <laughs> she is smelling. And again, you've got that short and lazy E and you've got that SH. Uh, with, you need that TH. Your kids think it's what it to her. Her, er, E R I R U R, go driving in a car and knows that O is going to be long going to say his name because mommy E is right there close enough to make sure he does. So if you just kind of think from the bottom up like a kid, all they know are individual letters and sounds. So then what? What happens when they get together and they don't do what they should? That's where things can change from something that you avoid to something you embrace. And you can embrace it if you have a child appropriate door to go through to give them the tool they need to do it on their own. That's really the goal here is to just see that this doesn't have to be scary. You know, this can right. be exciting. So, and the same thing with the second page that you see your sense of hearing, the E, E, A, um, they need to have that sound there. That's, that goes back to a secret, uh, helps you to hear. She is hearing with her ears. There's that E, A again to get that E sound. Um, that secret is this one. It is, you've heard it. Although it gets a bad rap if you do it wrong. I'm trying to see if I can. Oh, it's on the page. It's right next to it. It's that lavender. When these vowels go a walking, the first one does the talking. And it always says its name. Not when any vowels go a walking, when those vowels go a walking. And obviously that's because of things like the AU that I already showed you or the OU that you saw on that other page. So those aren't part of that poster because those have a different secret or a different sound. But this becomes totally doable. Right. And wonderful, teachable moments in there and content. You know, that's the beauty of this. This is real learning. It's not just Bob and Tob ate a cob, a cob. on the on the lob or whatever. Right. It's real stuff. So it's multidimensional right. ways to play. And that's what makes it so valuable. All right. Let's keep going. We have um, here is where she was talking about the stickers. So you can kind of see how she's placed them on there. Let me, oh, let me go ahead and hide. I left that up there for a really long time. <laughs> there we go. Um, so now you can see it a little bit better. Who's that? Yeah, and, and again, I'm sure. Who's that person? The little picture. The I person don't know, but I love that picture. And I, I just thought it was the cutest picture. And I wanted so you to see what I would do instead of stickers. I mean, not instead of stickers. I would use the stickers to show the concrete connections. I would not overuse the stickers because the whole idea is building independence, having right. your, you know, having those external, um, really it's like an extension of their working memory. It's up on the wall. They are there for the taking. Let kids notice that the letters that are in this word are on that wall and then bring the sound back, which they can do by themselves and attack that word. And that 
powers them up to feel like they can deal with any word, not just the ones you put stickers into. But I put stickers in for you guys yeah. so that you could see how to make these connections for kids where there are blends, where there are, you know, digraphs, where you've got long or short vowels and why, because there's a mommy either or there isn't, where there's a heart word, you see a little heart that's transparent on the OU there now. Um, and again, all of the text is accessible. All of it's decodable, beautifully decodable. And that's another thing I like about these readers. It's not sending you off on wild goose chases where every other word is literally an impossible word to read. Right. It's very well crafted so that well, if you have the knowledge of these skills, you can make your way thank through you. it and just keep reinforcing what you know. And that's not always the case. There are some guided readers or leveled readers that are literally just utterly anything random. Rhinoceroses and, you know, a crazy random situations with letters and text that, that really negate your ability to go in a phonics direction at all. They might give you great vocabulary or pictures, but you can't kill all those birds with one stone. With this, right. you really can kill so many birds with one stone and get so much more out of it than just a bland, you know, basic piece well, that so I think right cool. now some of them are. I'm, I'm telling you, I cry when I make these. It's so, so hard. Like who would thought it would be so hard to write text, but it is, oh, it's yeah. not, it's not always it easy. It is so hard. Um, one of the things that, um, the um, authors Birkins and um, Yates talked about was when, you know, the, the problem with guided reading was the queuing. Some of the problems with guided reading was the queuing system that we were using. When a student got to the point of difficulty, the first thing we taught them was look at the picture and then get your mouth ready. So those would be some things if you um, are are currently in a district where you have to use guided reading, I would, I would advise you based on their um, advice to remove that as a prompt. So to not look at the picture, but to draw their attention to the text, which works perfectly with what Katie is talking about with the secret stories as well, because you got to look at the text um, in order to um, see those little, you know, story buddies in there. So um, I, I think that those are definitely in line. But see, that's another feature of what you have that works so well is you have a beautifully um, attention grabbing picture. I mean, that's a neat picture and that's a conversation starter. And yet it in no way would lend itself to being the 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 course of attack for what's on the page. Right. It's this, it's right. this beautifully kind of attention pulling photo that absolutely once you know what's on the page works perfectly with the picture. But it doesn't it doesn't put itself out there as the first course of attack. Like right. so many guided readers do where they literally are trying to lay a breadcrumb trail with the picture because they know you don't have a prayer of figuring out the word. Right. So that's right. another feature that we don't always notice, but that's part of what goes into making really good, well-crafted readers. And, and again, if you have the tools to decode them, they can be decodable readers if they're well-crafted. And right. that's why that's, again, that's why I like these readers. And that's also why I just like a lot of the things that I've, it doesn't even have to be a reader, just things that I see that you create. There's a lot of thought that goes into those. And it, it's not a binary thing where it, it's either you can use it or you can't. I mean, not at all. It's, it's a matter of how you're using it. And like you were saying, using it with this intentional awareness of, you know, look at your things. If the picture is their only lifeline to get what the text is, then that's probably not a good right, reader right, to use, right. even to reinforce phonic skills, because their tendency is going to want to go with the shortest path. Right. And so even if they could read it, they may not. If the picture right. were such, like, why well, put all that effort into it when instead I'll just I'll just guess and check and see if that looks right. So right, um, right, and, that, right. and that's why we I think are in the problems that we are. So moving on, yeah. um, now I'm going to show I'm going to show you all. This is part of our decodable. So starting in this year, um, in this last school year, I'm I'm trying to think of when I started them. It feels like a million years ago, y'all, because I'm still working on them. But um, I started working on decodable readers following the scope and sequence that we suggested for phonics. So they kind of follow along, right? So if they're looking at the CBC with the silent E um, book, they would have already experienced time in the um, digraphs book. Um, they would have spent time in blends book and they would have spent time with a silent E, a, C, uh, a CBC word. Um, and so this is kind of, this would be something that they would be seeing kind of maybe mid-year if they were following our scope and sequence. So sent these on to um, Katie so that she could 
you know, do her magic with the secret stories and talk about how they would work here. And actually, if you could flip this one with the other one, because I want to do the short vowel version first, because you were talking about how you yeah. put them together. And that's absolutely correct. And what I liked about playing with these um, is, yep, that's it. Um, I could see, and, and I cut out certain pages for time's sake, but everything built neatly upon itself. So, you know, obviously when you make a sentence, when you craft a sentence, you're going to have to use the word the or her or was, or I mean, you've got articles and articles are not going to just fall into line and behave like we might, you know, get with pen, den or men. So, but that's okay. That's okay. That's again, another example of a word you don't have to memorize because you can read it. And that's the whole focus of science of reading and brain-based instruction. So with these short vowel sounds, because each page is really taking you through each vowel and reinforcing that, that's really ideal from when you're using secret stories to, to give that to kids. Because if, if you know how the secret stories work, you've got a bucket of understanding that's already there. And that is superheroes. We all know the cornerstones. Superheroes have power that nobody else has. They have a disguise, so nobody recognizes them. And there's usually somebody that's jealous, that's a villain that's trying to take away their power, and that would be sneaky wide. So if they know this, how do they reinforce and use and spotlight and, and focus, concentrated focus on application? And so again, with these and what you can't see are the pages in the middle, but it gives you an opportunity or gives kids an opportunity to use what they know bit by bit. Because with the secrets, it is all one learning curve. You don't need to break apart what is one, one um, learning concept. Again, superhero vowels, here's who they are. This is the bucket, you're just pouring that in it. But what you do need to take apart is their, their application of those tools, giving them a chance to now let's just try to read words, remembering that eh, short and lazy E sound. And let's read these words and read these pages while we're noticing those other words like the that has that or the her, er, all those little words in between where we're getting to really focus and concentrate our practice and yet moving from one vowel to the next, to the next. This right. is where the breakdown is so important. And this is what the secrets don't, the secrets do not have the breakdown of this applicational practice kind of weaving you through this structured literacy lesson. And that's really what it is when it's again, well-crafted because you've got these specific spotlights on things that you know you've taught, but when you've taught them, it's open-ended. And now it's time to kind of bring Let's that picture this. back to yeah. a small point. Yeah. And give kids a chance to build like tricycles. You know, you got to get comfortable taking those training wheels right. off and, so and that riding that bike. Right. Yep. Right. And this gives you an easy way to do that. So I didn't fit those little vowels in there, but you can see almost all of these are short E vowels with mm -hmm. the exception of the words mm -hmm. you have to put in to make an actual sentence like right. the had. Right and the not, but that still gives most of the focus on what you're trying to target right there, which is that short E. The good right. part is you've already told the whole secret about the superhero vowel. So it's not like they don't have access to those other sounds. You're just honing your focus in on the E and then you go to the next page and you've got this other, you right. know, this other, or this right. next book, you've got this other. So, um, when so we, anyway, when that's, we, that's this. Right. When we, um, by the time we get to this book in our scope and sequence, they will have had um, 12 weeks of blending practice already. Um, and so they will have had 12 weeks of blending practice as part of a whole group instruction um, where they're blending um, all of the short vowel sounds with a, in a CBC kind of pattern. Um, and so, you know, we did bring in some CBC, but we tried to also really keep it focused on some of those patterns. As you go in the book, um, in the decodable books, I think there's 25 books. Um, the decodable set. So as you get to book 25, they're all being used simultaneously. So A, E, I, so it's, it's kind of more of a mixture. Um, but this is the second book in that decodable. So it's really heavy on that yep. short, on that short E. Um, but I love what you were talking about. There's another page in here that we kind of talked about that you didn't do your magic with yet. But um, one of the words in there is the word seed. And so for us, what we did is we put a rebus in there um, or a picture clue to let students know we didn't want them to necessarily go over and um, try, to, try to decode it using the phonics we taught thus far. However, if you are using the secret stories, what I would recommend 
put something over the top of that when you when you photocopy it um, so that you don't have that picture clue to support. And then you could bring in your secret, um, your secret stories. Or Katie, here's my question. Would you put the story sticker on there before you ran copies? Do you know what I'm you trying know, to say? You know, I actually, yeah. I saw that question too in the group. I don't, I personally like to use those stickers only to make sure that kids are connecting the dots because I, I do see a lot of kids instantly make these connections. You know, you show them how to read the word how, you just tell them oh, there's two letters that they play rough, they get hurt and they go, ow! And then they see the word how and they go, ow, how? Then you've got kids who still go, huh, ah, wah, huh, ah, wah. And you're like, honey, do you see a secret in that word? Oh yeah, they play rough, they get hurt, go, ow. Okay, let's read the word, huh, ah, wah. So to just make sure that they connect them, I, I like to use those stickers to bring, I like to do it at the board. I like to make them a little bit bigger and put them over our morning message where I'm making those connections. I like to keep walking it back to where it lives on the wall because that's where they're going to have to go to get it. Right. But if we were doing like a guided reader or, or, you know, a focused reading lesson, a structured literacy lesson, you can interchangeably opt to have sometimes the text with those sometimes sound stickers, especially for kids who need those. Yeah. You cannot have it and let them do what some of the users were saying they do, which is just have them highlight it in advance, do a quick secret story hunt for 30 seconds so you can find the most in 30 That's seconds great ago. Idea. Um, to build that visual acuity. Yeah, but I think I like to just use them for the purpose of connecting. I just, and I love them. And, and I think they're well worth having, especially last year where we had no way to physically connect anything because yeah. we were in our living room and the kids were wherever. Um, yeah. This year, I love seeing them as a way to, to roadmap things or leave a breadcrumb trail for kids. Once they start to sniff out that trail, I would give them as much or more opportunity not to have access okay. to those visuals. Because That's kind of what I was thinking. Back. Like you would judge, you would judge based on your students, just like any other instruction, you're not going to do for them things that they could do for themselves. So if right. they look at right. that and go, right. Ooh, that's a story and they're looking over on the wall, then you don't need yep. to put that on there. But yep. if you have right. a group that is not making that connection, then you would want to do some explicit teaching um, maybe yes. beforehand, or maybe put some kind of little um, picture clue there, uh, maybe your sticker or, or some, you know, like you said, highlighting to let them know, hey, this is one that you're going to have to you're gonna have to think about. Right. right. Yeah. And if you highlight it, or if they, if they don't visually identify it, and then you identify it for them, and they still aren't taking the cue of looking back to find it, then they're not, they're juggling too much. Yeah, if they're juggling too much and that working memory is overtaxed, then yeah, absolutely. Take that little sticker, put it right there. And that, right. that's one less thing on their plate. Now they can just focus right. on blending. Right. You know? Or maybe the speech aspect of getting the eh, because that's a very, you know, that's a tight, engaged sound. So they may have too much on their plate to to hold on to all of that. And those right. stickers just give you a way to, to make it fluid. Again, really, you're just trying to orthographically support this sound symbol connection in the brain. And that just continues to forge that path between the sound and the symbol, the sound and the right, symbol. That's the right. goal. Oh, I love That's this. I love this. Um, hi, Edme. Edme is one of my friends. <laughs> so she's here. Hi, Edme. Um, so she somebody stands out among the Facebook users. <laughs> I know a lot of Facebook users. She has a real name. <laughs> I know. She's got a real name. We're excited when we see her. Um, so that was sort of the question I think we just answered. Hopefully we answered that for you, of whether we would use those, um, you know, stickers on a continual basis. It sounds like it's as, as needed. Sort of don't right. give them medicine right. if they don't need it, right? right? Right. And in whole group. And in whole group, it helps. If you're doing your morning message, it does right. help to use your secret. You know, we used to say, like, let's read this without knowing any secrets. And, you know, the word the is tahai. How is ha'awa? Then we put our secret goggles on and we take the secrets we know. And now let's read it, you know, the e, ha, ow. And of course it, it would be a whole sentence. Right. But when you put those secret goggles on, not every kid's goggles are going to be 2020. <laughs> so yeah. some of those kids need some are like, and Where am I? And when's mom, when's mom picking me up? Yeah. Right. That's where they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It helps Got them it. know why other kids are saying what they're saying. So they are very valuable when they're needed. It's right. just that you want to focus their attention on their independent tools that they can get to by themselves. And no one in life is going to go through and put stickers over the words for them, obviously. So I wish, I wish they them. would. I wish they would. Yeah. Let's see. I don't remember what's left in here. I think this was the next book. 
Um, but I don't know if this is the one you oh. want to talk about next. Yeah, I think that was in there. And then there was the long vowel where I had you switch pages because that was where Okay, you so we're going to go back week. up here to um, this one. Let's look at this yeah. one. Current slide. There we go. I have a glare on my window, so I'm like, oh, it's like blinding me. <laughs> okay, so this would be the long vowel. And kind of what I was talking about for the word bees um, I think there was an actual picture of a bee above there, but if you just put that, um, I mean, talk about much more explicit by having that sticker on there, or if you were going to be using this, maybe, maybe you cover it up and before you copy it or remove it, um, somehow, um, if you're using the digital version, um, you could, you can always put a, something over the top of it or put the sticker over the top. Are your stickers digital? They are. And I, I'm calling them stickers, but they're not actually on a sticker. You can put them on stickers, but they're made to just slip and slide and embed or print out and then use, like I said, with magnets over your morning message. You can make, I've actually made things with- Are they like just you know, Um, They are. They're just, okay. they're just copyright safe renditions of the secret stories. They don't make a lot of sense on their own. Uh -huh. Only to someone who knows what the secrets are, will they jog your memory because they don't come with the stories and you actually would never want to use them for reference because they're intentionally all cut apart. So it, it would quadruple your work there to manipulate, to make and break sounds in words and to connect the letters on the page to the sounds we hear. Whereas the, the secret story specifically, all the sounds are together. So like those, right. the two vowels go walking that are on that particular secret page. Right. Those so are all together has... on the sticker split. So if a teacher has your secret story like wall and they're doing all of the instruction, but they're like, oh, I also have this, you know, digital book that I'm using and I would love to be able to put um, a story sticker in there, then that's kind of what those are for, right? Yeah. Or like if they printed out these readers, they right. could easily take what this focus would be, which is mommy E words, words where the vowel is going to say his name. And they could just put the stickers right onto those pages and then print and make copies for the kids or use it digitally and in a um, like an iPad, as long as it's for your right. own personal classroom and it's not out there in the world. I was going to say, I was going to make sure I mentioned that because we do have teacher creators in the group as well. And so if you're thinking, oh, this would be great for my next project, keep it in your classroom. Don't put it on anywhere. You can <laughs> no, no, you do yeah. not want to do that um, because she has. She's like the mother of dragons. She has birthed these children and they are hundred percent hers. So we cannot, um, you know, we cannot, um, you know, take those, um, those, those are hers, oh. but you can totally use them if I'm hearing you correctly in your own classroom. So if you have a resource that you bought from somebody else and you think, Oh, it's almost there. I just need to put this on top. Then that's right. what those are for. Yeah. Yeah. You just okay. can't, you yeah. just don't, when you do that for your own class, you just want to make sure that like, if you're doing it, even with a seesaw or something that it doesn't get in, into the public area or that right. you don't give it to like another teacher. So it's really just for your personal classroom yeah. use. Cause these are still copywritten and trademarked. It's just that they're a safer image that lets you play a little bit as a teacher. Again, it just gives you a way to connect the dots, um, which in, in remote learning time was a necessity. You had yeah. to have a way to show, you couldn't just point to your posters, you know, they're not in your living room. So how are you yeah. supposed to help them make sense of the text on the screen? And that's where right. they were, that's where they came to, to life. Was to I mean, I think, that I think it's a brilliant thing because, you know, it, being able to, you know, you had said your, your secret stories is not a program. It's not a um, curriculum. I, tell me if I'm saying this wrong, oh, but you it, are. It, yeah, it's tools. And so when, when you have tools like that, you know, you don't just use, you don't just sit and play with your tools. You use them on something. And exactly. so you, you've got to, you know, I got my hammer and my screwdriver. I'm just going to, exactly right. right. So you got to use them on something. So I'd be able to have something that teachers can take and then use on something else makes perfect right. sense. It, it actually, it's so funny you say it that way. Cause that, that's really the whole nexus there is, you know, you're never going to tell a secret for the secrets exist for one purpose to read a word or to spell a word. You will never talk about a secret unless you need to figure out how to read this word or how to spell that word. Otherwise it's yeah. never a you day. You know, you're, you're always going to have to have a purpose to grab your hammer 
because you're going to hang up a picture or take a nail out of the wall. You're not going to just hold your hammer and look at it. So right. that is exactly what these are. And that's why, you know, you've got a lot of things you have to do already. These are just going to give you a way to get it done and maximize the value. Because otherwise, really, what are kids doing? They're just looking at words. If so, they don't have the rest of the world, code, what are they doing? The rest of the world is using a, a rock that they found in the garden to hammer. And your secret yeah. story, you're actually a hammer. So, right? Just nail tools. Yeah. And yeah, you're doing it better. anyway. Like you're looking at it anyway. Like the calendar is always my best way to explain it. But these readers are perfect for it as well. You're already doing the time. Get yeah. out. Milk it for everything it's worth. Like right. don't just look at the word August. Get something out of that. Get right. some sort of, here's a key I got to give you because it was August. Now let's use this sucker. Not just every day in August, but for every other purpose we can find. And right. so through this, more can come out. And I'm just thinking, I'm thinking September. I'm sure you got your er in there. Yes. Also. So, I mean, it's just, this, exactly. it's around us all the time. You know, we don't need to keep it. There we are. We don't need to keep okay. it under wraps, right? We're going to share those secrets. No. So no. you, you, you kind of you know the secret either. By just, just to say this real quickly, everybody knows what's happening here. Tell it however you want. Like, it's right. not like, oh, I have to learn all these secrets. These are based on behaviors you already do. Whether you're in Yugoslavia and speak Russian or not that they speak Russian there, but no matter what your language or your age, these are things that are the universal frameworks of our human understanding right. experience. Right. No, behavior. everybody is is, so, is sliding in. That's it's just By it's a way, natural. Can I, can I just say I love your newest pictures. I love this the colors that you have um, with your the you know, pastel I remember, ones. The pastel ones. I love those. The bright colors. I love them. I finally gave in. Yeah. I know you were like, you weren't having it. Well, well, the red has just got a lot of research behind it from it. When you look at that pattern recall that, you know, that visual acuity, half the battle with phonics isn't just knowing the sound. It's seeing the pattern before you're on top of it. Right. Kind of like a question mark. You know, you can't right. let your voice start to go up if you don't notice it in your periphery. So half the battle is having an awareness that T-I-O-N or A-T-I-O-N or O-U-S or you know, C-E-C-I-C-Y, that those are entities. And there's a three times higher rate of recall with a red background. So it's proven, it's scientific, and it just gives, again, it kind of concentrates that time mm. for more bang for the buck. But having said that, if if nobody wants to put red up, then it doesn't have any value. So, oh. and, and here's where I was convinced. Here's, here's where it's okay. This only is really important in a pullout classroom where kids aren't eating and sleeping and breathing these all day. When you're using the secrets in your regular classroom, it's like a kid in your class. You know it in your sleep. You don't need that three times higher rate of recall because it's part of everything right. you do. So it's it's like the world's fastest car, but you're only driving 30 miles. It doesn't matter. But right. if you're pulling kids out for 30 minutes twice a week, you really do need that red because they have to have every every available benefit to making this stick. It's not just about knowing the sound. It's about applying it and recognizing patterns that they might be two or three years late to the party on knowing about. Right, Older right. upper grade readers, they don't see patterns at all. They read right no. through them one letter at right. a time. So right. it's not a problem. If, and I, I, this is where I bent because it, it is not an issue if you are their regular teacher because you are weaving this through everything. They know these with their eyes closed. It's really just a matter for pullout. That's why those are still red. Those uh, smaller ones that are just for resource rooms, those are still red because they're a resource room. So they're polite. Right, they're concentrated. Right. I love so. this Facebook user said um, she likes the red ones because they look for the secret instead of the color. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And they that's stick true. out. They really do draw the kids attention. I think it's us as teachers with Instagram and so many aesthetic, you know, we have so many things now that we can try to emulate and it's hard to be, to be tied down to one color. So right. it's nice to have, you know, and I understand that. And at the end of the day, the goal is to use them. Right. So if something's going to block your comfort in using them, then that doesn't, that doesn't help anybody. So that's, Ooh, you know, but I still haven't made the smaller ones. I, oh, um, I did make these though. I did make these smaller, but these, that's another thing. I'll see teachers try to hang these up as a poster. Yeah. You can't no. do, and they, but they, they yeah. will cause they're small and we're so protective of our wall space. But again, remember that the whole idea is, independence, getting kids off of you and giving them a place that's kind of like a self-service buffet. So you're not the middleman between every right, right. page they're reading in that right. book. You know, that's right. the goal is that they own, this is theirs, but to do that, they have to see them. They have to have access. They have to be big enough to spot. These are just kind of for hands-on use, but they are, right. they did just come out in the colors. 
that you're talking about now. So I'll have to send you a set of these little ones so you have access to them. So cool. <laughs> so cool. Um, I know I'm always afraid to look at things of other people's because I'm afraid to look at them because you never know, like you never know where you, you hear things, you know, like if there's a, I mean, you and I talked about there's something with the why that, that you had contacted. Did I have tricky why or did I have sneaky why? It was sneaky why. Yeah, sneaky it was why. sneaky why. So, I mean, I, who knows where I heard that, you know, sneaky why from, a, I mean, it may have been while I was sitting in that session with you, you know, 15 years ago, it was, it was probably 20 years yep. ago. You know, I had to have been 20 years ago. I mean that, and who knows where that, so I try not to look at other people's things, but, um, I don't even know where I was going with that, but I would love to have a Well, do you know, do you know that phoneme, mathy, phoneme grapheme mapping is now trademarked by someone? And that's a process. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, yeah. that's a, an active procedure. So it, it is really, I mean, it, it gets, it gets a little wild when it's something that is just par for the norm course. Like, I don't know how you describe phoneme grapheme mapping without using yeah, the words phoneme, grapheme, and mapping. So, but it's tricky. I mean, it is. It's a, it's it's hard, right. especially. Yeah, I mean, it, so now you just have to say word mapping, or you are, you know. And I had no idea till someone contacted me and said, "Hey, you can't hey. say phoneme, grapheme, well, mapping." You know what? So it, if 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 they trademark phonemic awareness, we're in big trouble, right? Or phonics. It's yeah. a matter of time. Yeah. It's a matter of time. Somebody's going to do it. it. Um, okay. So this was another page that you gave us. Did we already look at this? I remember. I don't at think so. You, the brain was over there. This is just to show them side by side because you can okay. see for chip plays chess. It's supposed to be focusing on the CH, which it is, which is awesome. It, but it also brings back the vowels. And then by default, you've got certain things that are going to come up like the word what? I mean, that's like the word the or her. You've got certain words that are going to contain phonic skills that typically you'd have to memorize, but you don't have to memorize them if you have a way to decode them. So even with the simplest text, you still have to have those tricks up your sleeve to be able to give those, those opportunities to learn. And, and that's got a lot of secrets in it, but those are all high frequency secrets. You're going to toss out CH or SH or TH pretty darn fast because they're going to be everywhere. And that's really what, you know, when you think of secrets, think of keys and think, what doors am I going through on a constant basis? So what keys are most important to have handy. That's what kind of dictates what first. So you mentioned September. If it were September, I wouldn't toss out AUAW on the first day. I would do what you just said. I would toss out ER because if we try to read September, er, that's the part that's going to make me look like a liar after I sing my alphabet song. So it's right. all flexible in that way. And yet it's, it's all orthographically, it's all supporting that orthographic mapping process if you can make those connections. And connections are everywhere, but especially when you've got such well-crafted text, like chip plays chess, you've got an opportunity not just to reinforce the ch, but obviously the vowel sounds. And then you've got a way to talk about that a e y a y. You've got some blends coming in. I mean, that is such a great playground to reinforce the secrets that you've tossed out randomly here and there, but now they're all sitting together. At and the now, same table. and now we're gonna we do lots of application of those secrets. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm in a so for those of you who are wondering what I'm doing, I have two screens. So I'm looking at the screen big over. I'm not like not paying attention. I'm looking at the screen as she's talking. I just thought people thought, well, that seems kind of rude. I'm just like turning around. I'm just looking at my other screen. Um, yeah. I mean, I can see how, you know, you, you would want to have some opportunities for students to, you know, have some practice, but having that picture support or that uh, the secret support, um, I'm like in love with the CH right now. I'm in love with that choo-choo. And it's got a K sound too. So I know there's a third grade teacher, Fletcher Nelson. He just did a great video about, um, you know, secrets in words they do know, but telling them in the word they do know, because then there's a word they don't know that's got those same building blocks, but they're not connecting those dots. So like he used the word um, chemical. He said he's got, you know, a struggling group of third graders and they saw the word chemical in science in a book about something phosphorus and blah, blah, blah. There's secrets all over that, but chemical is the default sound. That's why there's a C up there above the ch. Sometimes they want to be the conductor. I mean, they love to ride the train and they go, ch -ch 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 -ch. but if you rode the train every day, wouldn't sometimes you think, you know what? I want to drive this thing. So that 
is the next most likely sound. Yeah. And without him having to do anything, he could say, no, guys, the words, there's no such word as chemical. Look up there. What else could it be? Well, they could bring the next likely sound down and figure it out themselves and just walk. He, he used the example of scenery as well. He said they all know the words center and circle, but they didn't get scenery. And that's the E-C-I-C-Y, G-E-G-I-G-Y secret. It's right there. Um, you know, there's just so many things like that where amphibian, phosphorus, they both had that pH. And he showed examples of them doing chart writing. And he said, no Fs. We've got no Fs because they now know about the secret that is this pH sound. So now it's connecting back with their visual memory when they're looking at the text, right. but they're not using their first course of action, which would just be to slap an F there. They're using that secret to go back and spell properly. So you're having like, you have third grade teachers who are using like to what grade level? Fifth grade. Yeah. Up to fifth grade. Okay. I was wondering to what grade level. Um, honestly, I feel like sometimes I need the secrets because I'm like, is that, you know, I R E R U R. So Me too. I know. Yeah. We yeah. All I mean, I was not a good reader in school. And so for me, it was just a way to work backwards of like, what do I know now that I didn't know then? And how can I leave a, a breadcrumb trail for little me right. who has a gap between what the teacher's saying and doing? And then what I'm actually, I mean, I believed the teacher when the teacher pointed to A and sang the song about Ace's apple and Ace's acorn. I thought, okay, those are my tool, two tools to hold. And then when she turned around and tell me it's August, I'm like, what the heck? What's going that, on? That doesn't know. Right. How is right. it August? So I was that literal kind of dot connector and right. the dots never connected. And I just got lost in that chaos. And, and it never made sense to me until I, you know, studied it. So, so with your secrets, these are tools that are used with your explicit phonics instruction. This doesn't take the place of explicit phonic instruction. This is, well, you can kind of just cram that in your head or you can look over here and, and have it you got a tool. So you got the rock or the hammer, right? right? Which one do you, which one's easier to use? We're going to go great. ahead. Wow. And right. that's what I like to see science of reading trainings. There are letters trainers that pull this in as a streamlined pathway, you know, keep in mind. And, and also with reading 360 phonics first, a lot of the states that created their own department of ed trainings for their, their state, they have model mm -hmm. classrooms where they do their mm -hmm. video lessons in for science of reading training. The secrets are just going to sit underneath what otherwise would be repetitious skill-based practice. You can give that focus structured practice for those kids who need that incremental breadcrumb trail. But for a lot of kids, and, and really often the lower the level, the, the more the secrets needed, not the other way around, because they're, they don't have access to all these other pathways and channels. They have right. access to feeling and emotional connections, right. but they don't necessarily have auditory processing or working memory right. or, right. or right. even attention capability or right. language deficits. They don't speak English. Right. So the back door is your common denominator. And, and that's, um, it's always easy to understand as opposed to memorize. Since the one thing that everybody agrees on is kids should never memorize words they can read, even the science of reading comes to a halt when it comes to words that have phonics patterns in them not yet taught. And so thus they have to be memorized. I would argue right. they don't because it's not a skill, it's a story. Give it now and then constantly set them off like dogs on a trail where they're always another. actively mm -hmm. trying to decode. Yeah, they would almost die rather than memorize something because they don't My, see um, why they would say that. Yeah. One, one comment here says my kinders are obsessed, all capital, with finding secrets we haven't um, gone over yet. They want them all. They're already making so many connections 20 and 20 days in. They find all the E-R-I-R-U-R -R -R in words. And we are so excited to find more. That is that's so awesome. That's pretty amazing. Question. Why, um, this is a question on here. Why is the Z sound not in the Better Alphabet song? My kids keep asking for the secret and are wondering why it isn't in the song. The Z. I think she must mean the Z as in the S making the Z sound because the Z is, Z says Z, 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 Z. Now I know my letter sounds and so my song is done. So it's the last letter in the okay. Better Alphabet. But why doesn't but the she S? she might be asking the S. Yeah, because a lot of people have said like voiced or unvoiced TH. S can say Z or S. And the, the simple answer is you don't need it to read the word. There's just like with voiced and unvoiced. If kids say e, the, they can read the word. And my litmus test is pre-K kinder, not higher level thinkers. So right. I don't want too many cooks in the kitchen unless it is a matter of being able to decode it. So there's a secret about every possible thing letters do when they come together and don't do what they should. If it would interfere with their ability to get the word. If it's a phonics rule for phonics sake, 
No, there's not a secret about it. And the voiced or unvoiced zzz versus s would in no way impede their ability to actually get the word. And really the primary goal with the secrets, while it does certainly help spelling, it's not for, it's to get kids reading. It's just to give kids earlier access to more of the code. And anything that interferes with that fast track is avoided. So there's not ever going to be a time where I'm going to toss out random things for no actual purpose because it's only going to slow it down. And the voiced or unvoiced z versus like in, um, I'm trying to think of an example, tosses versus, um, can you think of an of a word where the S's make the z sound? Um, um, as, as his. Right. Okay. As is. If they can read as or is, they're not going to need to have that extra half of it. It's just going to slow it down and add more cooks to the kitchen. And there is a post I did called Phonics Cooks in the Kitchen. And it's a great way to understand what is and isn't constituting a secret. If, if it's not decodable, it needs a secret. If it's decodable, it does not need that secret. So um, once you start using them, you'll see what I mean. If you come at this from the front door with a traditional instructional approach, you're going to be looking for all kinds of things that are Here's, here's a way I like to see, you can see if this makes sense. The secrets kind of just let you breathe underwater. So while a scuba tank makes sense and a regulator makes sense and all that stuff makes sense when you can't breathe underwater, it's a big pain to lug all that around once you can. So a lot of the things that you're doing now, you can actually let go because if the goal of the game is to read the word, get the word, they're there. As far as spelling goes, if your concern is, but then how would they know? Like if let's say they know the ow sound, right? But right. then they spell how, H-O-U. Now, by the way, Superhero O is flying overhead because he's their favorite all-time superhero ever. So they'll always stop in their tracks if they're rough roughhousing. If he ever flies by and they'll go, oh, 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 because they love him. They need that default for words like blow, flow, slow, glow. But let's say they write how and they spell it H-O-U um, or flower, F-L, you know, O-U, whatever, E-R. Reading is the best teacher. So if we can get kids reading, if we can give them more of the code sooner, they're reading. Reading is going to do far more for the spelling fine-tuning than we will. We have manual um, fixes that we can put into place, but the reading is going to do three quarters of the work for us. So if you can get them reading years before they should have, this is a second grade skill. If they can have it in kindergarten, they're yeah. not going to struggle with which one's right. So the goal of the game is always get them reading, get them reading, get them reading. That should right. always be the goal of our. And yeah. I love that science of reading is pulling secret stories in as a way to make sense of things that otherwise are abstract letter sound skills that have to be repeatedly practiced because they have no meaning. They right. can have meaning. And if you go to the brain science, these aren't just stories. You don't want aardvarks and princesses and sparkly stuff. These are behaviors kids already understand. And that's what makes it already known. It's already, it's already in there. We're just right. repurposing these connections that are already deeply entrenched and we're using them as super highways to get information they shouldn't even have access to. So it's all in the brain science. There's so much, that's why I like that book, Shifting the Balance, is they do get into yeah. aspects of the brain science that we aren't seeing examined as much in this trajectory of science of reading. In science of reading, it's all about how the brain learns to read. But I loved that in Shifting Balance, Shifting the Balance, they talked about how the brain learns to learn, how we yeah. learn, how we it's think, a great how book. we process. It, it really is a great opens book. up a lot more doors yeah. for conversation. Yeah, so I was so excited. Little yeah, I was really excited about it too. Hey, I'm dropping some links in here because there were some questions asking where they could find. And I don't know if they're asking about secret stories or the decodable. So I'm putting both of them. But Katie, I'm putting in um, your link to the TPT store for secret stories. But is that the best way for people to find? No, you? it really isn't. I would okay. put in the link to the group. And then maybe the link to the website, but the group is really the best place to see and, and yeah. feel out everything. The TPT, you wouldn't want to get anything on TPT unless okay. you have the secret stories kit because that's supplemental. Okay. Then oh gosh, I need to I need to get rid of that link then. I'm gonna I'm gonna delete that. No, I mean but it's I'm okay that it's there. No, I mean it's it's so it should be there too, because that's where there are things you can play. But right. you wouldn't want to play, you have to have the actual it's like getting coleslaw and chicken salad. First you want the roast beef. So you wanna have what you need. And that's just the class kit. Once you have that, everything on TPT is just a way to play. It's not something you need. It's just supplemental pieces to support or play or spin off in okay. a different direction with what you're doing. I'm, popping the the link in, I'm popping the link into her group again. Um, it's in now, if you're in, in her group, obviously 
you don't need the link. But I put it in the primary collaborative. For those of you who aren't didn't know, we're actually streaming in both groups at the same time. So, um, but I'm gonna I put that on there. It feels a little like advanced technology 101 for me, which it, those of you who know me know that that's not my <laughs> wheelhouse. But um, you should find her group. Um, I have um, been in there a bit. I've been trying to stay focused, but I have been in there a bit. And what I'm finding is it's a very supportive network for the secret story. So if you are only in the primary collaborative and you have dabbled, or maybe you're all in, make sure you join that group because um, what what I love and Katie has said as well that is that people will put questions in there and other, you know, Katie's not answering those, you know, these practitioners are, are actually, you know, in there saying, I use this, you know, they use it every day, they're answering questions. So it's, it's like gold. Um, and so to be able to have access, and then of course, Katie's available also in that group, um, when she's not, you know, traveling the world, um, to also kind of touch base with people. So make sure you join that group. It is amazing. Um, my district has had an unusual kindergarten schedule. Kids come all day, Monday, through Thursday and all day Tuesday and Friday and alternating Wednesdays. Am I reading that right? Um, I know I think it's Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, and then every other Wednesday. So they get oh, three got it. Two days. Okay. I was thinking it was through. Thank you. I'm glad you're reading yeah. it better than I am. I clearly need some stories here. Um, <laughs> our kids are on a path that is um, compacting years curriculum into half the time. Mm. Since starting Secret Stories in August, my kids are leaps and bounds beyond where they traditionally have been in the past years. That's amazing. Yeah. That, but that's, you know, there's a, there's a quote about brain science and it's that miracles become common and consistent when you teach with the brain and mind. So I'd love to say it's the Secret Stories, but really it's just taking what is in defiance of everything the brain learns, which is pattern. The brain's a pattern making dog on a trail. And when we leave these gaping holes between what we show and what we do, what they expect, and then what letters actually, you know, it just is, it just does. You just have to remember it. The brain doesn't have a leg to stand on. So when we twist it back in alignment with the brain system for learning, it's, it's, an, it's like night and day. It's really not the secrets. It's the research base that they are writing. It just, and it's access. It's all about access. Obviously yeah. kids who have access to more of the code they're reading everything, commercials, road signs, billboards, text is everywhere. They just right. can't ever take advantage of it because they're only getting individual letter sounds in kindergarten. And then right. they get basic blends and simple digraphs in first grade. And, and then they, if they're on oh, track, well, they get not outcome. for me. Reading's not for me. I'm not a reader. You have all of that kind of undoing, undoing um, behaviors. I don't think that's yeah, even grammatically no. correct what I just but, said. But they're but, justified in their struggle because how yeah. could you read nobody gave you an ow or an ing or an or if you couldn't have the er sound until second oh. grade how much reading could you actually do without coming to a dead stop all the time or the owl sound until the end of first grade or right. you didn't get to find out about babysitter vowels which are going to trigger a vowel to go long or short because it's multisyllabic but that's complex so you won't get that some fourth graders don't even have that how right. could you take reading and and eat it up all day long like you could just read bits unless you're very fortunate very clever lots of support at home, lots of repetitious right. use it or lose it right. practice. But right. those are not all of our kids, you know? A lot of right. our kids don't have any of that. And 20% of our students out there don't have the brain, um, you know, that they don't learn in a typical way. And so, right. you know, we we can't just immerse them. We need to we need to give them yeah. give them the tools. Yeah. Give them so tools. I, give them I tools. you know, I know we could probably talk about this for like days. Um, I want to see, I mean, I really, I mean, I'm nerding out. I love to nerd out on what science tells us. Um, and I really love having this opportunity, but I want to check and see if there's any questions that maybe people have had that they haven't had a chance to ask yet. Um, I would love to be able to, um, you know, have those questions be answered. Um, but then also to maybe say, you know, maybe Katie, you and I can have a little repeat of this again. If if there's some questions that come that maybe people could use some help. I know I would love mm -hmm. to point people towards your beautiful tool that has, I mean, I don't have to tell you guys how great it is. You can read it in the comments. That's what I'm just going to say is that you can just read it in the comments. The proof is in, um, 
the pudding. Is that an expression? I think it is. Or maybe I'm just thinking about dinner. But the proof <laughs> is in the pudding because the the people like it's almost like I don't I don't want to be insulting, but it's almost like a cult, Katie. Like people like no. are they are I they're know. believers. They are believers yeah. of secret stories, and and they've used it and seen the um the power. It's just it. such a it's such a it, it's when you do it you just say, what the heck was I doing? Like you, right. you almost don't realize how impossible your job is as a teacher to have kids read words that have five skills in them that they haven't learned yet and won't for two years. And yet your district says they need to know 300 by the end of first grade. Like right. we take for granted that there are these giant elephants in the room that we're having to work around. And we don't think about it because it's just the way it is. We have right. to put the cart before the horse. They have to read and write all day long before they have anything to read or write with. And we never... We don't, we don't stop and think about that because it's just what we have to do. And then when you don't, when you actually have a way to give them exactly what they need to do it, then right. you're like, oh my gosh, how did this ever, how did I ever do that? And it, and it does, it's such a paradigm shift that it creates exactly that. You, I don't, you're exactly right. And that isn't, I know what you're saying about that sounds like a weird way to put it, but it is such a, it's such a change of life. A good yeah. change of life, not the kind I'm going through right now. It's such a change of life that it really does. It just changes everything about your time and your ease and your kids. It just changes it. And it's well, again, it's not about the secret stories. It's, right. it's the approach of access to what we actually need to do the job. Well, what I love you know? is that, you know, I think, I think teaching is such a hard job and we've been talking forever, but teaching is such a hard job. And I think that there are some teachers who have been able to learn things like the secret stories, learn things about science of reading. Right. And so they now feel like they have like unlocked, you know, this amazing gift of let's not, let's not teach harder. Let's just teach smarter. And so right, it's right. almost impossible for them not to talk about it when, when they have yeah. seen the power of it. And that's, that's what I see in your group. Um, and whenever anybody's talking about secret stories in my group, it's the same thing. They are just like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So I love it. I want to see. So I'm wanting to but, use these. But like you said, but, but honestly, like you said, and, and this is really, cause I don't want to, I don't want to not, you know, make it clear that Yes, it's great, but the secrets are tools. So by themselves, what are you supposed to do with them? You have to have a way to use them and to play. And you don't want to spin your wheels and not get out of that time what you should. Because the whole right. point of the secrets, again, is concentrating the time to work smart, not hard. But if you're going to use that hammer, don't use it on a wall that's made of crap that's just going to break as soon as you put the hammer in. So that, yeah. you know, it's really the connection. I pick really carefully. There's only about three or four things that I've found that I've said. I mean, I say you can use the secrets of anything, but I don't specifically say to use it with something except for maybe three times that I can think of publicly. One other time that I said privately, because it really has to be something that's well thought out and it kills a lot of birds with one stone. If you're going to take the time to do something in addition to what your district has you doing, because you've already got the stuff you have to do. So if you're going to pull something else in, to do it for the purpose of kind of building those muscles that the secrets are giving the kids, you really want to make sure it's concentrated value that you're getting out of that time that you're having to carve out to do yeah. something else. And right. that's where the readers and the readers are just one piece because it's really not just the readers that I've seen of yours. I've seen a lot of the different things over the course of time that you've made. And the one thing that I've always loved is how many crossroads there are in everything. Cause that's really on a bigger picture. What, that's the whole purpose of the secrets is don't just look at work, you know, read them, right. use right. the tools to make use of this time that you're already reading and writing across the day. So if you're going to read and write, whether it's with readers or a sight word pack or whatever you're doing, it should be well done so that your connections are easy and they're fluid and they make sense and they're progressing in a logical way and more things are coming into play. Talking points, catalysts. You know, like I love that yeah. picture because it was so open ended with all the senses coming in. I mean, they were throwing their flour around. They just ate something, I'm assuming, because they look so happy. I don't know if they were chattering loudly, but there's so many conversations you can have about that that take you in a whole different place than phonics. Right. You know, right. And yeah. that should be part of what you're doing. Why just focus on one when you can have it all? When you can and have it all. And that's why I'm doing this with Didi. So I appreciate the focus that she's putting on the secrets, but I don't want to underscore what we're actually using them to look at. Cause it's not that easy. If you've, 
pull your typical average district readers, whatever the ones that you have are, you're not going to see that, that the connections are as easy for you to make in everything that you look at, let alone then those other layers that you can play with and unpeel for different purposes. So you do have to pick carefully and it's hard. It's hard. There's so yeah. much stuff out there so much. and you've got so much you have to do. How do you pick and choose what's really going to be worth your time? Right. You know? Right. So right. Thank you. I appreciate it. that means a lot coming from you. It means a lot to me. Um, I love, love, love using the secrets with my kids. I can't believe I've ever taught without it. Um, I'm wanting to use these sight words um, and just starting. Do I tell them every story in the first um, that um, that week's five words all at one time? So would you tell them all the stories at once? What I'm hearing you say is that you are telling them stories from the first day of school. Right. right? Right. Yeah. I mean, you are. So by week five, they would have already gotten set because you're not waiting to tell secrets until your better alphabet's done. You're doing better alphabet. That's going to take two weeks to a month for kids to have those sounds. Simultaneously, you're tossing out some secrets here and there. So by week five, they've got a few. But let's say that you've got to do sight words in the first week. I mean, let's say your district says we're going to do five words week one. You're still better off to give them something that makes sense. Like, let's say the words this, they, them, um, now, um, her. It's so much easier for them to know that they don't get along and go and then read those words, this or they or them or the they would have the A in it. You're always going to be better off giving them, teaching them to fish than teaching them to fish than giving them the fish. The time right. spent teaching the reading isn't, isn't well invested. The time that you want to invest is teaching the reader. So give them those tools because it's not just about those sight words. It's about every other word that they're going to see or need to put in their story to write that are going to have those building blocks in them. So you're not going to only visit those during that sight word time. You're going to use those sight words as your open door, kind of like the reader that we looked at today. That's your, your door in to toss out the one they need so that now they've got that key and yeah. you can start using it to get into all kinds of other places in math and science and social studies, students' names, morning message, calendar, lunch menu, anywhere there are texts, you will find those secrets. There's not that many. The code's not yeah. that big. Yeah. Really not, yeah. which is great. I mean, that's great for us. Um, the Fletcher, the one I was talking about in fourth, actually not Fletcher, a fifth grade teacher um, was, or was it, maybe it was Fletcher. They were talking about the word hydraulic. Did I already say that? Did I talk about hydraulic? No, you were, you had a different word, Cat, uh, catalyst. It wasn't catalyst. It was something else. Chemical. Okay. Chemical was the Senior, other word. I know there were, yeah. Well, hydraulic's got that AU in it and it's also got sneaky Y in it. And yet hydraulic is a very high level word. And yet those secrets are in words like my, you know, sneaky Y is in the word my, it's in the word July, it's in the word, um, it's in the word, um, well, it's not sneaky Y, but let's see on a calendar. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, July, by May, February, January. Y is pretty much everywhere doing everything, and it looks random. So if they have a way to identify and then make the best betting odds for Las Vegas call on that Y sound in kinder, yeah. that same concept can be tossed out in upper grades and reinforced in a word they don't know, like hydraulic. And those two letters in love, that A-U-A-W, ah, that's in that word too. So the code, is it's like a small world. It's a small code. It feels big when you're on the beginning grade level side of things and there's so much and it's overwhelming. Yeah. But these just keep coming back. I mean, they're like boomerangs. You toss out one and the kid and the kids will be the leaders. They will be the ones that say, I see the secret in that word. Look at the lunch menu. I see the secret in spaghetti sauce. Even if they can't read the word and don't know the S. Right. The at least starting to see them. And and some it's, of the yeah. people, there was a couple questions <clears> on <throat> idea um do kids get overwhelmed by seeing so many and i know i asked you the same question um and you know obviously if you're day one of school and this is students day one of ever being in school a aka their kindergartens or pre-k or something um you probably wouldn't go through and and in great depth but you would be you would be tossing out maybe you know today's thursday and um you know convention exactly right you know, here's Thursday. And then, um, you know, on Saturday, you're going to do what with your family? And then you could get into another. Um, yeah. So it, you, I don't know that you would be, um, I correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not like you're teaching the phonics skill where right. all week long it's all no. about these letter sounds. It's sort of more of like, oh, here's something here. And what I'm hearing, here's a sound here and here's a story here. What I'm hearing from the comments that are coming in is that 
at some point you, the teacher, no longer have to do that because the kids are finding them. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's absolutely correct. And the other thing with regard to being overwhelmed is think about Think about what you're already having to do and the amount of focus you're putting on it. Anything that makes you look like a big liar, that's when you need a secret. And what I mean by that is if it's a big thing, you're doing your morning message, you just sang your alphabet song, you said T says turtle, t -t -t -t. but now the first word in your morning message starts with a T because the word is the. It is far more overwhelming for you to show me a letter that's now not going to make anything close to the sound uh -huh. you just told me than it is right. for you to tell me there are a couple letters in this word that remind me of YouTube voice. You two right there. How many times have I split you two up already today and it's only 10.05? Do you know there are two letters just like you? So that is a story. It's not a skill. You would never think, oh, I think I read too many stories today. I think I shouldn't have read three. Three stories yeah. is fine. It's a buffet. It's just a buffet. A waitress would be where you're doing what Didi was saying you're not doing, which is where you're teaching skills. There's no expectation with a story. Now, I'm not saying every single secret in the sentence in your morning message, you need to tell them. You would be right. stuck never leaving your morning yeah. message. So that's yeah. not what I mean. Look for the biggest fish to fry. Look for the one that is going to be hitting you in the head on a constant basis, like the T, because TH is everywhere. Right. Or like I said, if it's August 3rd, I got 20 some days of standing up here and looking like a crazy person because the capital A over there looks just like the one over here. But when we read this one, we make a whole different right. sound. Right. So that's right. overwhelming because the brain literally disengages. When it when it can't engage, it leaves the game. And that's when you kick your neighbor or crawl across the floor. Right. If you're making sense, you're like a show they're used to watching and they know they they can connect with what you're saying because there's always right. a breadcrumb trail. You're not just popping up over here and left them over there. Like you're showing one of the things that, that I, I talk about also is when we when I teach writing, I tell the students to put down the sounds they hear. And so when they go to write the word of and they have a UV and I'm like, you know, no, no, honey, it's O F and they're like you know, like what, <laughs> what the actual heck, you know, um, you know, I mean, how, how many times do you, you, you put the sounds you hear and then somebody says, well, no, the, yeah, yeah, but that's not how you spell that. Then you think, well, then none of this makes sense. And therefore right. I'm checking out. So this is a great, um, a great way to, I don't and know. And that goes back to the orthographic mapping in terms of supporting that process in the brain, because every, Everything they have, if I try to sound out the word how and I spell it H O U, I am orthographically mapping. It means I know the O U O W say ow. I just don't have the text experience yet, right. having not read enough to know which one's right. But in my brain, I hear ow, I think O U O W. I see O U O W, I think ow. So I'm right. reinforcing my ability as a reader by writing, and writing begets reading, and reading begets writing, and it right. just becomes this whirly dervish, you right. know, an unstoppable force. But right. that's always the goal from a science of reading end is supporting that orthographic mapping. So that would be, you know, you have to invent what you don't have. And these are building blocks. So if you told kids, build a castle with your blocks, they could put that together, build an airport with your blocks. The more blocks you have, the better you can build what you're trying to create. And, and that's why the more of the code they have, the more they can actually milk the value out of the reading and the writing that's happening all day long. So there's a fun activity if Didi and I ever do this together to pick up where we left off. There's a fun activity we should start with because it really puts you in the place of kids like she's describing where they're stuck trying to connect the dots with our instruction and right. traditional instruction is geared not to connect dots at kindergarten and first grade level. It's geared to be the it's geared to constantly leave them with it just is it just does you just have to remember. That's right. the mantra when it comes right. to the code, because we're even so little to, to impart, and yet they have to read and write everything across the day. So Here's a question. I don't, you can't read the whole thing up here, but I just wanted to make sure that we got this. Um, and I can answer it, but can you read it? Can you see it there? Um, you, is it the... Sorry, so many questions. The, sorry, so many Okay. Yeah. So I've already introduced diagrams as the H brothers and those stories and bossy E for silent E. Should I backtrack? Um, you know, you don't have to backtrack unless it's connected to a bigger piece of the pie. So like with mommy E, as opposed to bossy E, the reason mommy E is so helpful is she's got to get out of the house sometimes. She can't take it anymore. And when she's got to get out of the house, she'll put a babysitter in charge. So now guys, if you see any vowel that's one letter away from another vowel, it's the babysitter. It's going to do just what mom would if she were there. It's going to tell that vowel, you say your name. So if they've got a word like uh, making, they don't need to worry that there's no E at the end to guide them. They know how to make a call on whether that vowel's long or short because it's the same learning curve. 
just like they listen to mom, they got to listen to Uncle Fred, they got to listen to their teacher. So it's one concept, but it's a bucket that houses what they need to take it all the way up to the highest level multisyllabic text. Mommy E, you know, if she's at the end or one letter away, she'll tell that bell, you say your name and by darn it, you will because mom's right there. If she's two letters away, like in the word butter, she can yell and scream all she wants. Her little arms aren't long enough to reach. And that's why that you gets to be short and lazy because she can't get a hold of him. If she were one letter away, butter would turn into buter pretty darn fast. And that's, that's a concept they can not just learn, they know it. There's a video clip of a little guy and he's explaining this to his principal. It's week three of kinder. And she asked him how he knew to put an E at the end. And he said, cause that's mama E. And he tells, she tells the I say his name like he's supposed to. Now a phonics rule isn't like you're supposed to. That came some, that's an internal, that's an right. internal navigation right. behavior. You do what you're supposed to. When your mom is there and she tells you to do it, you do what you're supposed to. So that didn't have to be taught or practiced. He knew that. Right. So if you can pour into that framework these concepts that they don't know, which are these vowels telling other vowels to be long or short, and they know what long and short sounds are because you've already hit that on the first day with those superheroes. So that's where like bossy E is going to kind of leave you at a wall when there's no E to guide them. And the whole idea is that independence, independence, seeing a word like hibernate, seeing a word like you know, independent and knowing which way the vowel's most likely to go. And if it doesn't work in a word like have or river didn't work, yeah. but you know what? It's only got two things it can do. Try the other one. Like that's where right. the real fun comes, that critical thinking. Right. What else could it be? What else right. can I try? If right. you know what's in the box, thinking outside of it's where the fun starts. If you don't know what's in the box, it's just one more exception that's overwhelming. Yeah. The it's, secrets it are really over the box. Yeah. yeah. And that's phonics. That's science of reading. Phonics skills are everything in the box. It's just hard to acquire those as skills and it's right. hard to get everything right. in the box quickly. One more question. And then we're going to say good night because, um, my family hasn't eaten and Mr. Wheels. <laughs> I haven't help. either. You haven't either. <laughs> um, and I love my, I love my groceries. I never miss a meal. So, um, when you put the posters up in the classroom, does the order matter? No, what oh. matters is that they're all up. They have to be all up. It does drive me out of my mind. And I try not to lecture like I do. My daughters tell me, you can't talk to like adults the way you talk to us. And I lecture, but I lecture because the only way you can do this wrong, literally the only way is not putting all the posters up. They all have to be up. You can't just pick five and put those up because how would you like to only get to use five sounds for two weeks? You can only say yeah. er, ow, ing, and oi. Like that doesn't make sense. So they all have to be up. I've seen teachers have to put them on the ceiling because they started it in the last couple weeks of school. If that's what you got to do, that's do fine. It. You can cut around them. You see examples of that in the group. You can put them on a closed washing line. If you can't put it on your wall, they just all have to be up. And then you just model how to use them. If you want kids to get off of you and become independent, they have to be up or you're everybody's point of contact. Right. You don't want right. to be the secret keeper for everybody. You'll lose your mind. So you want them to be independent. And that can't happen if those tools aren't in their tool, their tool chest. So that's up on the wall. But no, there is no way to put okay. them up. You can go in the group Good. and see lots of options to do it. Good information. Oh my gosh. I have enjoyed this. We have been talking for like over an hour and a half, which gosh. never happens. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Um, what I will do in my group is I'll go ahead and tag that post so you can go back and watch this if you want to, um, or if you came in at the I'll end. Do the same. And then Katie do the same and maybe yeah. we make a date to do this again in a couple months when people have had a chance to use um, use those of those people who are new, maybe you'll have some questions. I don't know. Well, I'd be happy to do that, but thank that you. Sounds great. And I'll pin it to the top of mine so that you guys can all find it if you're not here. And Dee, Dee the reason we went for an hour and a half, it's that same idea. It's just when I get excited too, because yeah. it does change everything and watching folks do it the hard way yeah. and, and feel frustrated, just yeah. um, energizes you even more to just right. want to go on and on. So yeah, I, I get like the mindset of the group because I've been doing this for years and I still get as excited. You still get about really it. excited. I am. Yeah, um, I'm do. really, I'm really excited to those people who are just starting off this year. I would love for you to um, keep sharing how it's going. And Katie and I, maybe we can make a date for like November. Okay. We are. Yeah, gonna, that sounds oh, I think we're going to be um, in Atlanta together, right? Are you going? I think I'm doing my remotely this time. You're going to do it remotely. So, okay. I was going to be in person. Now I'm going to be remote. Okay. So. 
Um, but if you are not signed up for the Teacher Heart Out Conference, Katie is going to be presenting um, along with another you know, 29 other people. Um, it's a great conference. Um, it's um, you, There's a live option. There's a stream live kind of interactive game option, which is kind of amazing. Um, and then you can always go back and watch um, sessions as well. I'll be doing some live things um, there as well. So Love, love this time together. Katie, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for everybody thank who you. stung with us, stung with us, stayed with us and hung out with us, <laughs> is stung with us. Um, and I'll see you guys next time we do a live. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you so much, guys. Thank you, Didi.